Hello everyone and welcome to Garak Farms. In today's video we have another exciting thing to show you and uh, here they are. We've talked about this. When we dried up that, that brown Swiss this summer. Remember in the barn we talked about that? You got it on videos maybe a couple months back or better that I thought that cow was probably going to have twins that I could bump these calves already. So these calves are four days old and she came in I want to think not quite three weeks early. She bagged up normal and everything. You know, sometimes when they have twins, they won't bag up or something like that. So that, you, you know, you're kind of caught by surprise because they always come early. And the other unique thing is she cleaned. So she had them out in the pasture, which is always better. We've been checking and watching it. The larger one's a bull calf, the smaller one's a heifer calf. And these guys are four days old. And this is the first morning they kind of were chasing me around as I was feeding them. This one, it took over a day before it could stand. That one took over two days before it could stand. But we, as you can see, doing really good. Twins are always risky that way. More than once when we had twins in the past, usually maybe a couple sets a year of that out of 60 births. I mean, that's kind of normal. One doesn't make it or both won't make it. Or what I think happens is the first one tears the umbilical cord off of the second one on the way out. Something in that order I don't know but that's just a risk of twins so the mom this would be her fourth lactation she just got into she was a twin from that old number 100 that we showed last fall and if you go back again we had that set of twins which I think you just showed yeah, them here the, a little bit the, the two Africas they're, the they're Afro, down yeah they're yearlings now they're probably just shortly over a year old now so they had done really good, and it was kind of the same story, but they were both heifer. One was slightly smaller than the other. Now you see how much lighter they are? They will get, the mother is almost uh, more of a golden brown. I mean, the, in, but they're usually born light like this. Some will stay lighter throughout most of their life, but they typically get darker as they get older. That's just kind of normal they're being like that. But she did clean, which is very rare. They never do. You know, the placenta is what we're talking about, the afterbirth that, that just attaches the calves to the cow. That all supposed to come out within a few hours of birth, and, and by God, it did. But then the crazy thing, so I came there early in the morning. Calves are all soaking wet. Mom's up licking things off, so I just left her and come back after I did all my morning chores to fetch them. And then she had milk fever, which is uh, calcium imbalance. It's, I don't know how to explain it, but... You might want to talk to a veterinarian. They'll give you all the, I don't know how, what makes that. But anyway, usually an older cow. So we got to go out there and give her an IV. Came back a few hours later. She's up again and brought everybody home. That was, we knew we were going to get results at that. But that's typical in an older cow. And maybe it even, even it's more prone to something that would have twins. I don't know. But there's really no, I don't think there's any way of preventing that. The history goes back. So mother of these is a twin. And... Her first lactation, or as a heifer, she had twins. And I know I told this story maybe a year or so ago, where she was in our heifer barn over here, along with everybody else. She did start bagging a little bit. And I did have her bred AI, so I had a date on her. But I come in there, and, she, and there it is, a dead calf laying next to her. She's lying down. And then you think, oh, goodness, what happened here? So I go prepare the, the maternity pen here for her. And I go back there. She's standing up. There's a live one laying behind her. It's a set of twins. Okay, that explains why one didn't make it. So that makes you feel a little bit better about the fact that this is just a fluke of nature. Twin has a twin, and then she had two bull calves in her next two lactations, singles, and then she had this set of twins again. And I want to think her first set was a bull and a heifer too, and I, want, I, I don't remember which one didn't make it. It doesn't really matter. So typically when it's twins, most of the time it's a bull and a heifer. Very rarely it's it's the same sex. When there's a bull calf involved with the heifer, the heifer, I want to think over 99% of the time, will not have re reproductive parts. Won't be able to produce a calf, which means it won't make milk. So what you're going to do is you're going to raise it for meat or you sell it to the guys that buy feeder calves that raise it for meat. You know? And that's what's going to happen with these guys. We're not going to keep these guys. So I was thinking about that this week after these guys were born. And our original brown Swiss, we bought from her, my wife's sister, maybe 25 years ago. And she didn't have no place for it. They had just this hobby house, you know, house out in the country side there where they were trying to do something. They found a calf, and I, the story was this, this calf was in with a bunch of steers. And it was, I think it was already maybe off milk. I think it was maybe, you know, like, I don't know, six, eight weeks old or what it was when they got it. But I thought, well, why would somebody have one heifer in with these steers? And then I thought, maybe that was a twin. Yeah. You know, and it just dawned on me. I'm thinking, like, because I want to think, 
uh, I know we've we had twin Swiss from that family. Now our what are we? We've <laughs> six, eight, ten generations later. Yeah, you know. But I was thinking that it seemed like we're getting more twins from the Swiss. And right now, what do we got in the barn? And with the with those guys, we maybe got about five, six, seven of them now. Yeah. You know, other not counting these. You know, we're kind of getting more of them, but it seems like they're always having twins. You know, so I wonder if anybody knows this, because I want to think there's something to that. I think they had it bred when we bought it. I think her dad took it up to his farm and when it got older, and he had it bred to his bull or something like that. And we ended up. I don't remember exactly how that went. She was pregnant when we bought her, so that's how the brown Swiss came to this farm. Anyway. Yeah, so possibly she was a, a twin, and her brother was a you know a steer. So then they oh, assumed, a bull calf. So, so they yeah. assumed that she wasn't going to reproduce, and then that's what put her in with the steers, and and they got her cheap that way. Or so. And the thing is that the Swiss, and for the longest time, it seemed like so. If you had a group of feeder steers. Which are basically where they cut they cut the um, they cut them out so they're just raised for meat. Typically, the brown Swiss they wouldn't pay as much. They don't grow up as fast. Yeah. And even I noticed with the heifers, the Holsteins that grow up with them, they'll be you know they'll they'll be of of size already and mostly well developed already when they come into milking. Where the brown Swiss are kind of small, tiny otter, and it seems like it takes them almost a full three years before they get yeah, to their full potential. It takes a while for them to gain. So. Yeah, so they're always kind of, they're a little leery about buying a Swiss calf to raise up for feeders. But now with meat price so extremely high, even though they may not give us what they would for a Holstein or maybe a beef breed, I think between the two of them, we're still going to do pretty good. But the risk we only got is right now they're healthy. Everything's great. This morning they, they drank very well. It just took a, a few days for them to really get vigorous, and that's normal. But then you have to be concerned about scours. And when they're small like that, if they would get the scour bug, that you could lose them. We'll just have to see what they look like on the sale days because once a week they have a sale day for bull calves and, and replacement animals. And I guess we'll, we'll be looking at that then. But mom's out in the pasture with uh, the rest of the milking herd because these guys weren't able to suck her right off anyway. And I want to be sure they got their milk, being that there's two of them. Don't want to take any chances. So if you haven't seen the prior videos, this is uh, our set of twins from last October. I think they were born October 7th. It's pretty much a month right yeah, now, or yeah, a year. A year right now. So yeah. here's the, the bigger one of the two down here. And then... Uh, Here's the other one. If you guys look back, I'm sure you can scroll back and see what color these were when they were, I think I filmed them like, like a few hours after they were born. Cause the mom was down here and I think I helped her with them, but they were really light colored. This one looks like a little bit lighter color than that one. That one's gonna end up being a little darker. Now, if you're wondering what these other ones are, like this here, that's got some short horn and just looking at the face, I'd have to get in the records, but I think we got some Jersey mixed in there too but we've been doing more of that we got a lot more color in this barn and over here we got another one this one i think is more short horn there is a little whole scene from way back we got a little bit of that jersey face but but anyway we get we're getting a lot more color in this in our herd and i like them seems like the few we had come in already they're smaller and they melt just as good more vigorous too. yeah and their and their calves are worth you know when it's a bull calf it's worth more I'm um, like, that's, that's definitely got short horn when you got that hair mix. They call that blue roan and they got that mix. It's like white hair mixed with the, with the black hair um, again. And they gain nice, you know, just on baled hay and not as much grain or silages. The big concern was, is maybe already for the last 20 years, is inbreeding. They claim there's only really officially three Holstein families left. You know, they've been trying to pick the best of the best for so long that there's you know, it's getting to the point where they got to throw some red in there. We've been do, using some red carriers, which is, again, a whole nother, it's, a, in a sense, another breed, even though they're, they're very similar to the whole scene, except they're red and white instead of black and white. It's kind of like, uh, even as, as anything, uh, anything that's crossed, it seems it's just the health is always better. It always was. Yeah. So, so all the young stock is looking great. And uh, a happy birthday to the last year's set of twins. And it's exciting that almost a year later, we have uh, another yeah. set of twins. So and these would be, uh, what would these be? They'd be... Their you know. mother is a daughter of the twins' mother. So the, these would be nieces. 
I think uh, niece and nephew. Yeah, yeah oh, that one. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be fair to say. But that that's the interesting thing. And their mom was a twin. Now she was kind of more shorter and wider. And the sister to the to the mother of these was smaller, but kind of a just a smaller build all the way around and i think i think that one had uh, something with the foot yeah she had hoof problems there's that was documented too where i had to, yeah that I was maybe a couple years ago over that. winter we had to let her go just because you know you you want to let them go before they get worse you know yeah. which she was still doing what she was supposed to it's just that things like that eventually they just don't get better you just know that so when you got other ones to replace and that's what we have to look at this whole thing we're in is now for instance that swiss cow she had the two sets of twins and and two bull calves so so far she didn't actually technically replace herself yeah. but her mother replaced herself how many times yeah. you know so eventually you have to call them out you know and say hey the, the young leave room for the young so the young can can be do the producing and not have to worry the risk of uh, having older animals you get too many older animals you start running into more milk fevers and you know different feet and leg problems and it always happens when you dry them up or when they have their calf again and probably more so when they have their calf again because of that change you know you take them from the from the milking herd and now you put them into a different area where they don't get fed the same they get fed as a dry cow not as a milking cow yeah. or it, when she has her calf again and i think anybody in the dairy business will fully agree with that that's the riskiest time if you can get two weeks past that where she's doing really good yet you're probably out of the woods and then you know you're good to go with your milk yeah, yeah. but that's uh enough of the brown swiss we have a, a story to share with you guys that uh it could have had a, a bad ending but due to our uh our smaller farm size and and being able to give animals more attention you know give them more time we were able to save a calf here over the past uh, couple weeks so this heifer calved it's got to be already maybe three and a half weeks ago now Kept out here in this patch of grass here. They're real nice, you know, the weather's been nice, everything. If you're gonna get a successful calving, this is where you're gonna get. Typically in the winter or the cold months or something when there's no grass, you get in the maternity pen, it's a smaller area, you keep them well bedded, they're more likely to get stepped on or something. But this heifer was calving and it was getting dark, so I finished my milking chores, I come back to check on her, and um, she had the calf, it was already pretty dark, so she's licking it off everything looked fine so the next morning i come out here i got her milk looking at the calf laying down i could tell it sucked you could tell by the heifer the calf sucked the mother so i just milked her whatever extra and and went about my day and then later in the day i noticed that calf was still laying in the same spot and i thought well that's kind of interesting so i i don't know if i just went over to investigate and i realized the calf had a broken back leg now I've been doing this for over 30 years, and I've never had this. I've ne and I thought, was it born like that? And, I, and, uh, and typically they come with the front, and I thought, maybe in a pen or someplace she could have nagged it up against a gate or something, but I thought, no, this is a back leg. And out in the pasture, on the dirt, odds are I've seen cows step on calves, you know, by accident. They're just doing what they do, and, and uh, usually it's pretty forgiving, but anyway, below the knee it was broke and it dangling there and we did we did have it casted um in a kind of a primitive way we did what we could thinking well let's see what happens here i didn't expect this calf to be doing as good as it's done and we've done some research and talked to some veterinarians and stuff about what can you do and nobody really has a definite answer you know it's it's kind of a you cannot immobilize that calf so anyway, we had that on for like a week and then we took it off. And uh, well, just the other day here, I was, we were spraying some, what we call blue coat. It's an antiseptic for, to, to uh, cause it is draining a little bit where it's swelling to just prevent infection. And this calf, I feel it's doing pretty good when it can outrun me, okay? This calf can outrun anybody. So, so we just decided, okay, we're milking a cow once a day on the side. The calf is nursing. We'll give you guys an update. It is a heifer calf. We can't sell it like that, obviously. Nobody's gonna, you know, you can't expect. So as long as it stays healthy, we're just gonna keep going because it seems to be putting a little bit of weight on it. And I'm starting to get more positive thoughts about um, what this might become. <laughs> so, but 
as you can see there's not a problem getting around and it doesn't appear to be in any pain or anything like that so i mean like i say if you're going to have cattle you're going to end up with things like this you farm long enough you, there's no way we could prevent these things from happening this oh even if you put a you know you got a hundred and some cattle here if you put a hundred and some people in a environment you know, yeah some sort of yeah yeah you know on a farm for a, you know a year you're gonna have you know a broken leg or a sickness or something within that year there's always going to be something so that's what we have to look at i know some of you are going to have some thoughts about what what the why this happened that calf well like my last bull calf again being a heifer calf they're usually worth a little bit less but so in early october here i sold a bull calf here 765 bucks you know about the same size as this one and only a week old so again you know you we don't want to lose these calves yeah. Yeah. and this one here even if even if this one's got a hobble later on in life you know we could you know still make a meat animal and i think if it's going to be getting around fine it probably could even carry a calf but as far as being longevity in our herd i you know you, you, let's get real you know it it it's probably uh even if it heals up to the point where you can hardly tell it's going to be a weak link yeah. i mean you're not going to want to push your because then once she's down then she's worth nothing again you know so you kind of gotta get it to a certain point and maybe say hey we can we can recover our you know, profits on this but anyway that that was something i had my doubts the first few days i thought after a few days it's going to swell up and get sick on us and things like that and it's doing great yeah it's shaped into a real uh happy story so far and and we'll be updating you i can i can definitely see a happy ending here where that calf will it just seems like get up in the morning and think oh boy everything's going really good you know all week or whatever but it just every time i walk out here i, I typically make the loop through the buildings just make sure nothing's tangled up or, you know, you got to lay out your feeds anyway and stuff and then finally get going in the dairy barn, which is that's where you spend most of our time with the cattle. And you just never know what you're going to find. I don't care what kind of setup you got. There's always some bizarre something. You'll say, why? How did that animal get caught up there if that's been like that for since we came here? And it, you always kind of think what you could have done to prevent all these crazy things and most of the time i think it's just uh all you can do is give it give it a reasonable amount of attention you know and take what you get no way we're gonna prevent it all and i don't think there's a farmer i mean we we basically live with these animals now which is not not terrible it's just um you have to balance it you have to take care of yourself you have to take care of your animals and yeah so i'm just happy to see the thing running around because the last thing you want to do is have to have to watch it suffer. Yeah. You know, so, so far so good. Yeah, everything's great. All right, that's going to be it for the video. Nice little cattle video. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for the support. Leave comments what you think of those brown Swiss twins and what we got going on there. Also, like we said with that other calf, we'll be updating you. It's looking like it's uh, it's going to make a recovery and, and we're going to be good to go. So thank you all for the support. Thanks for watching and we will see you all next time.